A discarded aluminium can tab, locked inside a slab of solid rock on an English beach, might sound like a science fiction vignette, but it's a real scene that reveals how industry and nature are colliding to forge entirely new types of rocks. Geologists were astonished when they discovered that steel mill waste, dumped on England's Cumbrian coast, had fused into rock in only about 35 years. This human-made stone, studded with telltale artifacts like coinage and pool tabs from the late 20th century, tells a vivid picture of our influence on geology. Across the world, from slag cliffs by the sea to plastic-infused pebbles on remote beaches, human activity is literally turning trash into stone, leaving behind a newfound legacy in Earth's crust. Welcome to the geological wonders of the Anthropocene, where slag, plastic, concrete and culture are forming rocks of our own making. In the north of England, along the Derwent House shoreline in Cumbria, glassy blue-grey cliffs of industrial slag loom where there was once just solid waste. These cliffs are not natural bedrock but hardened steel-making waste, a 20th century byproduct transformed by time and tide into something indistinguishable from natural stone. For over a century, iron and steel furnaces in the area spewed out molten slag, the stony leftover of metal production. An estimated 27 million cubic metres of this hot waste was piled by the sea, forming artificial hills of black and grey gravel. Now, decades later, waves and rain have sculpted those piles into a roughly cemented coastal platform, essentially a new volcanic-looking rock formation born from a century of industry. What alchemy turned a heap of granulated slag into solid rock so quickly? The secret lies in chemistry and time. Slag is rich in the same ingredients that make natural cement – calcium, silica, iron and magnesium. Normally sedimentary rocks need eons for minerals to dissolve and glue grains together, but here the glue was premixed from the waste. As ocean spray and rainwater percolated through the slag heap, minerals like calcite, goethite and brucite began to crystallise around the slag fragments. These minerals are common in ancient sandstones, but on this beach they appeared in a flash binding the loose slag and sand into a concrete-like mass. In thin slices of rock, geologists see halos of these cements radiating from each fragment of slag, mimicking the textures of well-aged sedimentary stone. It's as if nature grabbed our industrial byproduct and said, let's make a rock, but fast forward the process. The rapid lithification has prompted scientists to coin a new term, the anthropoclastic rock cycle. Much like the classic rock cycle taught in textbooks, where erosion, sedimentation and cementation slowly turn sediments to stone, this anthropogenic cycle is happening on human timescales. In the case of Derwin Howe, it took mere decades, not millennia, for loose slag pebbles to cement into cliffs. The implications are huge. If industrial junk can turn to stone so swiftly, environmental planners have a new factor to consider in coastal management. Indeed, freshly formed slag rock is already altering the landscape. The once loose shore at Derwin Howe is now armoured with a cemented apron of slag that waves cannot easily shift. This changes how the coast erodes and how waves reflect, potentially diverting sediment movement along neighbouring shores. Paradoxically, the rock might lock in some toxic metals from the slag, preventing them from leaching widely. Yet the process also creates an alkaline plume in seawater that can stress local marine life like mussels and algae. Environmental scientists note that such instant rocks come with trade-offs. They might trap pollutants, but they also pave over habitats and alter tidal ecosystems. And with steel production generating about 400 million tonnes of slag annually worldwide, this isn't an isolated quirk. In Britain alone, over 76 miles of coast are lined with old slag deposits, each a potential rock garden in the making. The Anthropocene rock cycle is in full swing wherever industrial remnants meet the sea. On a remote beach in Hawaii, campfire flames and ocean plastic have united to create a startling new kind of stone. Walk along Camelo Beach, a once pristine shoreline now infamous for accumulating heaps of plastic debris, and you may stumble on lumpy, colourful rocks that look like someone melted a bunch of trash into the sand. In fact, that's exactly what happened. These fusion rocks are called plastiglomerates, a name scientists gave to melted plastic bonded with natural beach materials like sand, shells and coral. In 2014, geologists Patricia Corcoran and colleagues documented this first known plastic glomerate at Camelo Beach, confirming that human litter can transmute into geological material. Plastiglomerates form when plastic waste is exposed to high heat on beaches. 
At Camelo, it wasn't volcanic lava or wildfire that provided the heat. It was ordinary campfires lit by beachgoers. With so much plastic mixed into driftwood and sand, any bonfire can accidentally become a cauldron, melting packaging, bottles and fishing gear into a sticky goo that glues together the sand and stones. Once the fire dies out and the plastic cools, what's left is a jagged mass where bright green fishing net and black lava pebbles might be frozen together in a matrix of hardened, burnt plastic. Corcoran's team found hundreds of plastic glomerate pieces at Camelo, ranging from small plastic chunks, broken bits of plastic rock, to larger in situ blobs, where melted plastic pooled in crevices of the basalt shore. Every piece, no matter the size, had plastic for sure because that's what melded everything together. The plastic came in all forms, ropes, nets, lids, you name it, forming a rainbow of pollutants locked in stone. Other far-flung locales have reported similar discoveries. On Brazil's Trindade Island, another remote spot plagued by oceanic plastic, researchers recently found melted green plastic from fishing nets fused into the island's volcanic rocks, essentially plastic rust, that the scientists also classify as a plastic glomerate. It appears that wherever significant plastic pollution meets fire or extreme heat, new rocks can form. Even without a direct flame, extreme sunlight and hot sand might soften certain plastics enough to bind them to rocks, as suspected in some tropical regions. The key is that once plastic merges with heavier materials like sand or coral, the resulting plastic glomerate is denser than pure plastic, so it no longer floats away. It stays put and can get buried by more sand. This greatly increases its chance of entering the permanent geologic record. In essence, these quirky plastic pebble hybrids might fossilize in place, becoming a future stratum that shouts out the story of the mid 20th to early 21st century pollution. From a distance, a plastic glomerate might just look like any other dark rock on the beach. But up close, one might spot the telltale turquoise of melted polyethylene, the striations of black charred plastic, or the embedded shards of multicolored microplastics glinting in the sun. It's a visual collage of the Anthropocene, nature's ingredients, sand, wood and basalt, bound together by a synthetic creation, plastic, into a new enduring mineral concoction. Geologists have proposed that plastic glomerates could serve as a marker horizon, a distinct layer in sediment that delineates the plastic age of humanity. If a future geologist cracks open a cliff and finds a seam of plastic glomerate, they might deduce that they're looking at deposits from the late 20th or early 21st century, when plastic pollution surged. It's a sobering thought. Our throwaway plastics, from toys to toothbrushes, are literally turning to stone and becoming timeless in the geologic archives. As one research team concluded, our throwaway plastics look likely to persist on Earth pretty much forever. Or at least until some distant future when they might even metamorphose back into oil under pressure. As a dark irony some geochemists have speculated. Scientists have formally suggested that the Anthropocene Epoch, a new division of geologic time, be recognized by such signals. Looking far ahead, what story will these human-made rocks tell? A geologist millions of years in the future might drill into Earth's crust and retrieve a core sample from our time. They'd see a swift transition from normal soil and river deposits into a strange mix, a layer with bits of concrete and plastic unusually high carbon ash, scattered radioactive dust, and fossils of odd domesticated creatures. Above that, perhaps, a layer of truly solid anthropogenic rock. A fused layer of waste marking where humanity's impact peaked before things changed again. It will be evident that something extraordinary happened. A species learned to create novel materials and inadvertently scattered them across the planet, leaving a permanent mark. In our time, Coming to grips with this geologic legacy has a sobering effect. It underscores how rapid and profound our impact has been. We are not just shaping the surface with cities and roads, we are engineering the very rocks beneath future feet. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.